and we are live. Hello and welcome. I am Lisa Barmise. This is Motivation Monday here every day, uh, every Monday um, on Facebook and Instagram. Yeah, I feel like a total badass when I can do <laughs> this double simulcast thing. So um, as people are joining in, uh, today's topic we're going to be chatting about is your body aging too fast? What does that even mean? Uh, and we're going to deal with three different tips that you can use to you know, kind of help yourself with that. So if people are coming on board, do say hello, do give us a shout out. If you have any questions or comments as we get going, just write them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer. Um, for those of you who haven't joined me live before, my name is Lisa Barwise. I consider myself a wellness alchemist, which means I'm the kick-ass catalyst in the transformation of women around the world, strong of mind, body and character. I'm the creator of Warrior Goddess Kettlebell Training and the online 28-day beginners program, which we've just relaunched and I'm very excited about, and also what we call our Warrior Goddess Body Programs. So today we're chatting about, is your body aging too fast? So what I want to talk specifically about in reference to that, okay, is metabolism, because that's really what we're talking about here, is um, the sense of aging and how to reset your metabolism, how to harness the power of your metabolism to help you to reach your body shape goals, to help you with your lifestyle goals, to help you to feel more energetic, to help you to reset any sort of hormone imbalances, all these sorts of things, yeah? So what I wanna to touch on with this question and why I put this question in, which is, is your body aging too fast? is that there's a quite a bit of like misunderstanding in terms of what a metabolism is and what a metabolism does. In fact, I hear it all the time when people blame their metabolism. My metabolism doesn't work as well as such and such and therefore she can eat as much as she likes and I even look at a cookie and I put on weight or all of that sort of thing, right? So there's this sense of them, it's, it's, it comes down to whether your metabolism's good or bad can be the success or failure with regards to fat loss or weight loss or body shape change. But I'm here to tell you that that's not kind of true and it is kind of true at the same time. <laughs> so your metabolism, which is really just the, um, the efficiency or the efficacy of your body's system to be able to use all of its organs um, successfully um, and running very well and running um, to burn energy. It's basically the burning of your calories uh, to turn it into energy that helps your body and that's what your, met your metabolism is in layman's terms I suppose I could get more technical but I'm not gonna so it's really about understanding that it's the burning of calories calories in food um, and your your metabol metabolism is a little bit like a furnace okay so when you put that fuel in if the furnace like a little furnace of a, of a little you know train engine is working well then you will metabolize that fuel and you will burn certain amounts of energy energy is can be stored um in the glycogen in our fats for example and fat reserves so you want to have your body working at a at a at a at a certain efficiency to make sure that your metabolism is working well. Does that make sense? So your, your metabolism is a sign that your body is working well and it's also the sign that your body is going to be able to burn fat for you uh, and also to keep your organs ticking along and to give you the energy that you need. So all we need to know at this point is that, you know, a high running efficient metabolism is what you need to have those things, to burn fat, to feel good, to um, make yourself feel uh, alive. And also you, your metabolism does slow over time. So it might make you feel younger. And that's what we're gonna talk about. So as you get older, you're obviously, your furnace has been chugging along for a while. I'm gonna stick with this analogy. I think I quite like it. Um, your, your furnace has been chugging along for a while and things happen to it which can help it to not run as efficiently as you would like it. So if you just think about that analogy of a little train engine, if you're putting fuel into it all this time and it's burning all of this to release that energy, um, it's got a lot going on in terms of even a thermostat. It's got, you know, things to regulate it, the actual functions of the furnace itself, all of which can over time have issues. So if we're gonna stick with this analogy, I think we're going to. If you're thinking about the thermostat of your furnace, 
that's basically your hormone system or your endocrine system. So if you are, if your hormones are out of balance, that also means that your furnace might not work so well, it might not burn to the correct efficiency. If your furnace has a lot of residue and blockages from trying to deal with this burning, then your elimination system, we're talking about poop here now, um, might also clog up and make your furnace not so work so well. And also, you know, lubrication, yes, I'm going into water now with lubrication, all these other things. And then also the, the mechanics of your furnace might not work so well. All of these things do play a part in your metabolism. So as we get older, our metabolism just starts to slow because we've obviously used our bodies a lot and it just begins to slow. Also, as we have more hormone imbalance, it can really affect our um, the efficiency of our, our metabolism. But the major number one factor that I see time and again that affects ladies' uh, metabolism is dieting decades and decades of dieting. And why is this the case? The two things, well, two things, there's a couple, but the two main things that boost your metabolism are the building of lean muscle, having more lean muscle in the composition of your body, which ultimately you get by eating the certain correct macronutrients. So eating the right thing at the right time will increase your metabolism in addition to exercise, okay? Again, having um, more muscle and um, being able to have more lean muscle will increase your base metabolic rate in the long run. But in the short run, just those two things will increase your metabolism. So if you're somebody who is really reducing their amount of eating, not hitting the right amount of calories, not even eating the right amount of calories just to survive in terms of you know, trying to work out how many calories you should eat per day. There's lots of different calculators you can use to do that. If you're not even hitting that amount, which quite a lot of ladies are, if we're sticking to 1,200 calories and 1,000 calories a day, which are just numbers picked clean out of the sky, ladies, okay? If you're just thinking, yeah, 1,200 calorie diet's gonna suit me or a 1,000 calorie diet's gonna suit me, when you have never actually even looked at the amount of calories your body needs, not just to like move around and exercise, but to function in terms of its organs, in terms of all of that sort of stuff, okay? So it's really important that you know how many calories your body needs to eat and then looking at the calorie deficit that you might need to lose weight. But if you're on a diet continually and starving yourself, which is what happens, your body thinks it's in some sort of a a horror movie. <laughs> it thinks it's in some sort of star. It's like it's not what we call starvation mode. There's it's slightly wrong starvation mode in terms of what we've been told. But what actually happens is your body stalls its metabolism. It goes into uh, survival mode. It goes into okay, something's gone wrong here. She's not getting a lot of food. Must be some sort of a drought or something happening. We're going to hold on to your fat cells. And more importantly, it might even begin to and dare I say it, cannibalize your existing muscle and and in addition to the fat. So if sometimes it doesn't go to fat, sometimes it doesn't look at your fat stores because you haven't taught it that. Uh, and that's a certain system that you need to do in terms of teaching your body to take existing fat stores for energy. What it may do is start to cannibalize your muscle and what we need uh, for in order to, you know, increase our base metabolic rate to increase our metabolism is to have lean muscle. So over dieting, over uh, under eating, is the biggest, biggest, biggest thing that is causing your body to age too fast. So although you might have be believed at one point that eating 1200 calories or 1000 calories is what you need to eat to keep your shape or to get slim or to feel skinny, this is not the case. You need to learn to eat the right amount of calories, the right thing at the right time for the right purpose. And then when you add proper exercise, proper training and understand what sort of training, this is also going to have an impact too. So the first point, what is causing your uh, your body to age too fast? Not eating, okay? So eating itself, just the calories alone will cause your body to stall the metabolism, which will also then put it into some serious risks in terms of thyroid and hormone imbalance, stress levels, all those sorts of things. The other one is not eating the right types of foods. So we've talked about eating the right thing. So it's really important that you understand about uh, 
stress and oxidative stress and antioxidants. So oxidative stress is what happens in the body again just by living, okay? I'm gonna use another analogy. We went from a train to a car, but we're gonna use the car analogy for oxidative stress. So if you're in a car and you put your foot to the pedal and you really go for it, you're putting that engine underneath a lot of stress, okay? So as you run your vehicle a lot, your body will, uh, your, your vehicle will begin to you know, need regular maintenance, it will begin to need regular oils, you need to put fuel in it, etc. But as it gets older, it also kind of rusts a little bit, internally rusting, externally rusting. This is what happens in the body with oxidative stress. So oxidative stress is you putting your foot on that gas or on that gas pedal because you want to go faster. This also means that exercise does this as well. It causes the body to go to release more free radicals and those free radicals begin to break down the body. If you have too much free radicals, it can damage the body and can lead to conditions like sickness, like, you know, cancers and Alzheimer's and all these sorts of things. So free radical damage is what happens in the body because not only about you putting that pedal to the metal, but also outside influences such as pollution and even flying and over-the-counter medications and smoking and alcohol and caffeine and all the things that we know that aren't good for us. So it's really important to understand that oxidative stress causes the body to age too fast. So if you're doing all these things that cause the free radical damage, you need to counteract that by consuming uh, antioxidants. The body doesn't produce these on their own. You need to consume them. And how do you consume them? You consume them through fruits, vegetables, and berries preferably raw and from a good range of them, okay? So this is why we advocate green prudies, lots of vegetables in your prudies uh, and your, which pr <laughs> a prudie is a protein smoothie. So we um, encourage getting lots of protein in plants and using that as a way. The other way that I do it is I supplement with different sorts of greens and different sorts of other supplements to enc encourage my green leafy veg intake in addition to consuming uh, leafy veg, but sometimes we just don't got time to chew that many vegetables. So whatever you can do to help your body to do that, then that's what you need to do. So understanding free radical damage and oxidative stress, the rusting, the external rusting of your body, it's the only way to really describe it. Sorry to describe it in that way. Um, but you then need to counteract that by antioxidants, which you need to get from fruits, vegetables, and berries. And we're not talking five portions of fruits, veg, and berries, ladies. I mean, seriously, it's like hitting 10 to help you to do that. Hence why I always say it's almost impossible to eat that amount. You need to be able to get it from a supplement. And I, I'm a great believer in supplement for that reason, because we're really busy, ladies. I'd love to be able to say, go out now and you consume 10 portions of fruit and veg and believe that you're going to be able to do that. In my experience of working with really busy women who are professionals or have lots of kids or other responsibilities or are carers of parents, etc., we don't always have time to focus on nutrition in that way. So to give ourselves the opportunity to bridge the gap between what we should be eating and what we do eat using supplementation, I 100% um, am an, 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 you know, an advocate for. Can you get it from you know your fruits and veg? Yes, go for it. If you can consume 10 portions of fruits and veg every day, you rock on with your bad selves. In my experience, very few people do, and therefore, why not help yourself? Why not give yourself the best advantage? So that's the second one. So we've talked about dieting and decades of dieting and under eating, the amount of calories that you have, which knocks the body um, into a survival mode. It's another stress mode, basically. Then antioxidative uh, stress also knocks the body into stress, which is causing your body to age too fast. And then the third one is an interesting one, is that it's still to do with stress, okay? So we've talked about stress in terms of uh, in terms of oxidative stress, which is something that happens with free radical damage. It's a breaking down of your cells. We've talked about stress in so much as dieting puts on, we're not having enough fuel and your body having to basically turn on itself to, to fuel yourself. And then the third one is just other stressors in our lives. So we live in a time of unprecedented stress, so many different responsibilities, so many things, so many hats spinning, so um, or plate spinning. It's plate spinning wearing different hats. I can mix my analogies there. Um, but we do, we're so busy. So 
we tend to put ourselves under a lot of pressure, whether it be pre uh, stress, whether it be through work stress, whether it be through, you know, financial stress and all the things that come with that. Um, and also just the stress of trying to keep up with others, trying to trying to prioritize our self-care, all of these sorts of things kind of become very counterintuitive and cause us stress. There's also a lot of things that we consume which put a lot of stress on the body, everything from the over-the-counter medications and alcohol and sugar and maybe tobacco and, and smoking or maybe um, even flying too much and pollution and all toxins within your within your cosmetics and toxins within your cleaning products. All of these things make a massive impact in terms of our hormones and adding to our stress hormones of cortisol. So I've given you all these things of what happens. So what can you do? So with that final one, what I have done personally to reduce the stress that happens within my body with these outside stressors is that I personally have changed up all of the makeup and cosmetics and cleaning products in my house to have more toxic free ones, toxin free, more um, vegan friendly, animal friendly ones that are plant based because of the impact it can have on my body. Specifically for ladies post 40, this is really, really important. Um, that's gonna really, I mean, we think that these potions and, and creams that we put on ourselves are actually trying to keep us from being, uh, from aging when in fact, the, the toxins within them and how they're made are actually disrupting our hormones, which is causing a lot of stress on the body, which in which in essence is going to age us faster than trying to deal with it with a cream. So look out for um, these sorts of toxin uh, friendly, reduced kind of products so that you can get your body to not age as fast and to still look good ladies because we know that that's a priority for us. And then also we want to look at antioxidants, getting fruits, veg and berries in our diets. So, so, so important. That's why we take our green prudies. That's why we encourage you to, uh, for supplementation to add into your green prudies or to take um, every single day. And you need those antioxidants. They're, that's the only way that you can get them is through consuming them. And then the third one is knowing which way to help your body to change its shape without dieting. Learning to eat the right thing at the right time, learning to focus on building lean muscle through strength training and then eating the right things to keep your body from um, basically building, you know, all the muscle that you've built and your body continues to eat away at that if you're not consuming enough food. So you need to consume the right amount of food, the right thing in terms of proteins and fats and carbohydrates and focusing on strength training first and foremost to help you to get that body shape change that you're going for, which if you do it correctly, will actually help you to look younger, to feel younger, to boost your metabolism. And that's what we're going for in, in the long run. So I hope that was helpful. Thank you so much for joining here on Insta. Lots of ladies uh, joining in, some from probably some dudes too, that's okay. <laughs> We okay with the dudes. So um, I hope that was helpful. We will be here again doing uh, our simulcast again next week. If you have any questions for me, this is what I, you know, use as content. This came up in a conversation. That's why I'm, I'm covering it today. But if you have a specific question or a query or a suggestion, you can go ahead and DM me through Instagram or PM through the Facebook page or email me at hello at warriorgoddesskettlebelltraining.com. I'm here to answer your questions to help you to stay motivated, to understand body shape change, specifically post 35 for women um, to help you to overcome all of those other, you know, crazy pieces of information out there to work out what's going to work for you and for your body. Um, if you want to find out a little bit more how I do that specifically and how I help, we've just relaunched our 28 day beginners program online. I will pop a link in underneath this video because I'm so excited. Please uh, come and join us. We're opening registration now. We will be kicking off with a joint uh, start program on the first week of September, but we're opening now because you need a little bit of time to get your head in the game and to understand how to get yourself kitted out with your kettlebells and what food you're gonna eat and understanding all the little nuances in terms of what you want to eat and how you want to approach it. Uh, we don't believe in one size fits all. We also don't believe that beginners should be treated in the, sa you know, in the same way, just given loads of information and hope for the best. It's really about supporting you where you're at and to help you to figure out what's going to work for you and for your body. And that's it. So 
again reach out if you have any questions you know send me an email send me a, a private message i will get back to you and it might end up being a topic here on our motivation monday so enjoy whatever you're doing today and i look forward to catching up with you all very soon peace out